Okay. We're telling your followers that you started a live video. Okay. Blue Sky Boy Love joined. Sarah Sarah joined. Uh, Julie Bowles joined. Bella and the Briel joined. I'm probably not Terry Spiato. I'm probably not uh, pronouncing all of these names correctly. Welcome back to Home Together. I'm coming on here a little bit early um, because the governor of the great state of California, Gavin Newsom, is going to be joining us at 1.45. And so I thought I'd come on here a little bit early so we can build up an audience for him because he's one extremely busy, busy person. And we wanna make sure that we have really good use of his time. I'm trying to fix the lights here. Anyway, um, and Patrick, uh, uh, I'm Maria Shriver. And I'm Patrick Schwarzenegger, Maria's son. I feel like we were just here yeah. a few minutes you ago. You can now introduce yourself as the co-anchor. Okay. I'm Patrick Schwarzenegger, the co-anchor. Of Home Together. Of Home Together. And I'm Maria Shriver, the other co-anchor. Welcome. Good afternoon, or good evening to you on the East Coast. And once again, happy Passover to those of you who are gathering or gathering virtually. There's a lot of Zoom Passover gatherings today. Right. Um, so uh, West Virginia is watching. God bless you. I was once met you at St. Monica's. That is our church. And we will be going to Easter Sunday Mass via technology this Sunday. So Porter Ranch, Birmingham. My girlfriend's from Birmingham. Welcome. Oh, yes. You have a wonderful girlfriend, Abby Champion, and her family still lives in Birmingham. Yes, they do. They do. And so we're, um, anyway, we're super excited uh, in just a few minutes to be talking with Governor Gavin Newsom. As you have seen all over this country, the governors have been on the front lines, really scrambling to get masks, scrambling to get ventilators, scrambling to make sure all of uh, their citizens stay in, practice social distancing. Uh, many of them been, have been incredibly creative with the way they have encouraged us to stay in uh, with um, how they've managed the situation. I think this has really proven that it's important not just to vote in national elections, but to vote in local elections, statewide elections, because who you have, what, Nothing. Running your state matters. Who your mayor is matters. Um, and so I think you have seen that in real time during this uh, crisis. Gavin's been doing a great job, says. I just oh. got a message that Gavin said he's running a little bit late. So he oh. will be on here in seven-ish minutes. Seven-ish minutes? He's running five, ten behind. Oh you know? my goodness, you're going to have to talk to me for five or seven I, minutes. I guess so. What are we going to do? <sighs> oh my God. Someone start the, uh, the <laughs> clock. <laughs> I've been voting all my life. Foolish ASF. <laughs> Foolish ASF. Thank you for sharing Newsom your knowledge. Newsom is doing a great job. Well, how many people on here are one, are new? And two, if you caught our segment this morning with Chef Andres, um, please let us know. We got some really great feedback from a lot of you guys saying how much you enjoyed it and uh, how inspiring and impactful he is um, and continues to be. So we'd love to see who is... Um, who has been on here and watching us. Yes, I like that Gavin and Garcetti both doing a great job. That's true here in California. I was just telling Patrick that I read a tweet from Governor Murphy in New Jersey. I saw some people uh, there in New Jersey uh, thanking um, Governor Newsom for the ventilators that are on their way to New Jersey. Also a tweet from Cory Booker, the senator from New Jersey, thanking uh, Governor Newsom. Governor Newsom is sending out, I wrote that down, 100 ventilators to New York. Up oh, there goes my co-host. Uh, 100 to New Jersey, 100 to Illinois, 50 to Maryland, and so on. Um, so we'll talk to him about that, about how we're all in this together. Uh, so we're not just home together, but we're all in this together. So a state the size of California that's able to get 200 million masks, the governor announced that last night, able to get these ventilators. He's taking care of his state. That's what he's elected to do. But also he's taking care of his fellow um, citizens in this country, because at the end of the day, we're all in this together here in this country and obviously around the world. So this is a global moment. 
and uh, it's definitely a national moment. So um, it's a big news day. Mm -hmm. Ventilators, masks, Bernie Sanders dropping out uh, and trying to consolidate the Democratic Party. So there's a lot of political news going on. Uh, Andrew Cuomo ordering the uh, flags in New York to be lowered to half mass because of the uh, number of people uh, who lost their lives today in New York. And um, then there are people trying to go about their daily lives, school their children, put food on the table. Chef um, Jose this morning, so inspiring about just getting food to people who need it. Uh, working with homeless groups, working with local organizations to get food out to people who need it. And um, so there's so much good going on in the world. That's what this Home Together program um, has really been all about is highlighting the healers, the helpers, the cultivators of hope. And uh, we hope that these conversations have brought you some hope, have inspired you in some way, have lifted up your day in some way. I'm working uh, for Gavin Newsom, actually, uh, on uh, his task force. I'm leading his task force on Alzheimer's prevention, preparedness, and the task forward. So I want to just um, mention that we're actually going to be doing a huge uh, um, Alzheimer's town hall. I'm doing that without you. Wow. Yeah, on Facebook. Wow. Yeah, it's not home together. It's California Alzheimer's. So... I didn't think you probably wanted to shake my head. That. I see how it is. Yeah. So you, I didn't think you'd want to maybe join in on that. But if you're interested in Alzheimer's, if you're interested in caregiving, if you have been a caregiver or are a caregiver or a home health care worker, you can join us at three o'clock on Facebook, California Alzheimer's, uh, where we're going to try to bring some much needed information to that community, which is large. A million. few people here are saying, how can we help? Uh, maybe it's specific to Alzheimer's. I'm not quite sure, but um, you know, I think Governor Gavin Newsom will see uh, tell you guys how how everybody be, how everybody can help. And well, we, there's excuse me, the town hall can be viewed at Facebook.com Alzheimer's California. I think it said. Okay. I I've not done one of those before, but I can tell you tomorrow how it went. Uh. <laughs> it's open to you. Don't have to live in California. That's just the website. And it's done in partnership with AARP, uh, the Alzheimer's Association, the Women's Alzheimer's uh, Movement, and other organizations working on the front lines, trying to help those who are children of Alzheimer's, like I am, uh, caregivers of those who live with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia, home health care workers. There are millions and millions of people who are, I think, 18 million people caring for people with Alzheimer's or other forms of dementia. And the governor has been leading on that. He also wants us to um, be better prepared. When we talk about being prepared, one of the jobs of a governor is to prepare their state for whatever comes. And so he's asked us to prepare California for the Alzheimer's crisis. So we're gonna be doing that, or we are doing, working on that for him um, as Someone we Someone just said the seven minute clock went off. Oh. Wow, wow. someone really did uh, <laughs> have, have it running. Thank yeah. you. So I don't know, do you go check and see if he's... I can go and check and see, see if, if he's... he's uh, well, it'll pop up in a second of people It'll that... pop up. Oh, there's... It's popping up. Let's, let's see here. So. No, he's not on there quite yet. Well, that's okay. We know that governors don't run according to schedule. They have really lots of things on their calendar. Yes, I'm sure he's quite busy yes. in general and then especially... Um, with everything that's going on right now. So we're very appreciative that he is taking his time today and um, coming on and speaking with us eventually. Yeah, and eventually. And also I took several um, questions that several of you left on uh, when we asked you for what your questions would be for Chef Jose and or Governor Newsom. And a lot of you asked, uh, really wanted him to know how grateful you were for his leadership. And you also wanted to ask him what this had taught him about leadership, what it had taught him about governing. So we'll try to ask him those questions. I enjoyed Glennon Doyle yesterday. Yes, Glennon Doyle was really good yesterday. Um, she talked about um, her organization, Together Rising. She also spoke about her book, Untamed, and about this moment um, in our history. 
And so she was terrific. Tomorrow we're going to be oh, speaking with Van Jones. I just saw the California governor's Instagram came up. You did? Yes. I How think did they, you tell that? No, they just commented. Oh, it just did. California they gave a little governor. wave saying, hello, we're here. Oh. So now... Um, and I just want to do governor. a shout out to the governor's first partner because she's also doing a terrific job, Jen Newsom. They have four little children. After 40 years in television, Patrick, this is called vamping. Uh, yeah. This is when it helps to have been prepared and read as much as possible so then you can talk when there's nothing going on. Well, I'm, I'm being the technical part of this and I'm, I know, I'm trying I know. to get it. I really appreciate so, uh, that. So, Governor Newsom, if you just, I saw you had commented, waved, did you um, request to be on the Instagram Live with us, then we will accept it. I'm sure he has somebody there helping him. I think so, but I'm just, you know, I talked to him because I know he's the one doing it. Well, he's pretty technically savvy, though, actually. He was always very savvy, very Silicon Valley organized beforehand. That's... You know, before other people were, I should say. <clears throat> um, but he's not search on there. Search it, maybe. C-A... Gov. C-A Gov. I think that's what it was, but... He'll come. He'll come. He'll okay. come there. All right. Hopefully, Cal Gov, it says. C A Gov, I think. Yeah, C A Gov. That's our Gov, C A Gov, because we're here in California. And, um, but I've also been very impressed by so many of the other governors who have been holding press conferences. Governor Cuomo. There we go. Oh, there he is. Got him. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, um, Three, two, one. Hey guys. Hey. Yeah. Sorry, I was. What you, Maria? You called it vamping. What is that? Yeah, it's called vamping. I so like luck, that. Well, luckily, good vamp. Well, enough. job vamping. Yes, thank you. <laughs> luckily, I was going to say I have enough info on you that I can vamp for quite oh, some God. time. <laughs> She's teaching me still. She's teaching me still. She's teaching you. Good so, to see you. How are you? I'm all right. How are you guys doing? We're doing uh, pretty good. We're I doing mean, great. We're, it's we're great good. to see mom and son together. On the Isn't same that, couch. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every time I've seen you, I'm with my mom. So uh, we true. are practicing socially distancing. We are practicing that. We are staying at home. Which <laughs> so we're heeding your advice. So we want to start, Governor, by everybody's been saying what a great job. First of all, what a great job you've done. How you've really led our state. How you've looked to other states. I don't want to talk about that. But you just recently came out with the newest figures for California, and you seem to be trying to kind of on the one hand say we've got this under control we're doing well but you need to stay home you need to continue to treat this seriously and you need to continue the distancing where are we yeah i mean i think we have effectively in california bent the curve to buy us time but we've also stretched the curve so rather than a slope going like this we've got a slope going like this moderate growth in terms of the number of hospitalized the number of icu patients the number of testing positive. But part of the slope is now extended out beyond what some are referring to as the peak of the next week or two. We're not anticipating a peak, at least in the state of California, in the next few weeks. We see our peak going into May. And that's why it's absolutely essential that people double down on what helped us get this curve bent in the first place. And that's the physical distancing, it's working. Right. I think it's been so, you know, interesting to see on the news and talk with other people. They've been saying, oh, look, we're, we're you know, flattening out the curve. It's great. You're, you're, I've heard that more and more people have been kind of going out now, but it's really important to, rem to remind people kind of what you just said, that we need to continue what we're doing. This is just showing that what we've been doing, the social distancing has been working, but yeah. now is not the time to celebrate. It's still a long ways away. No, Patrick, just to reinforce that, I mean, we're just looking at, you know, we, we get data every single day so we can get a real sense. Uh, Caltrans, for example, in the state of California gives me transportation data every day. Uh, they quite literally give us specific data figures on all the freeways. And what you're starting to see in the last number of days is the number of cars starting to increase. We're really worried at what's happening in our beaches, our parks, not just local parks, state parks, all 280. And you got a beautiful weekend coming up in California the rain that we just had now moving behind us, our biggest fear, you got Easter Sunday, everybody desperate to get out, getting cabin fever, uh, that we start to start seeing 
folks come together that shouldn't be coming together at this stage right when we're so close to really starting to turn the page and get a handle on this. Governor Newsom, you've been in politics a long time, a former mayor of San Francisco, lieutenant governor. What has surprised you about government at this moment in time? What have you learned kind of on the job? What surprised you? And what do you think you were, because you had served in so many capacities, equipped to handle? Yeah, you know, Maria, it's awkward for me to answer that question with you because <laughs> you and I have had so many conversations about the imperative of focusing on sort of a communitarian spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, this notion that we're capable of being so much more when we work across our differences and we focus on the things that bind us together, unite us. What has blown me away, absolutely blown me away, is the civic spirit. People uh, at scale doing things I never imagined we were capable of doing, regardless of geography, regardless of political party. I'll just give you a proof point of that. Over 90,000 people have filled out detailed application to provide licensing information about their expertise as phlebotomists, as radiologists, as wow. nurses, as doctors. And they've gone on a website to contribute their time, uh, retirees, nursing students uh, across the spectrum. I mean, those are just numbers that you, we don't experience. Those aren't people just checking in for a second. Those are people filling out detailed applications saying we wanna help meet this moment. And it is just, ennobled me. It's given me so much faith in our capacity to not only meet this moment, but our limitless capacity to meet every conceivable moment. And so that's, 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 that's the headspace I'm in. I'm just humbled by that response. Yeah, I, I, I feel the same exact way. I think we mentioned that the other day, whether that's just seeing people on a social distancing walk saying, hi, how are you to reaching out. But I think that something that's positive or optimistic that's coming out of all of this is I feel as though as a nation, we will grow a little bit closer and, and kinder towards one another. Speaking of, you know, people going out of their way to help other uh, help others, you've, you know, been um, going out of your way to help other states. I mean, you just donated, I think, 500 ventilators yeah. or something to uh, multiple other states. Can you talk about that? California is such a large state, so densely populated, and yet you are taking the actions to prepare for California, but also for other states around. Yeah, I don't need to tell you to especially, but California nation state, fifth largest economy in the world. Uh, and we punch above our weight, even at that scale. And that allows us to be in a position where we were able to send 300 ventilators last night. We got this C-130, we got our National Guard. They took off yesterday morning. They landed in Illinois and in New Jersey. Uh, sending out ventilators for those states, another 100 uh, to New York. This morning, the National Guard then uh, went to Delaware, went to D.C., uh, and is driving to Nevada, uh, including Maryland, uh, to provide additional ventilators. We're just uniquely blessed. But again, it goes back to the previous point. The reason why is because 40 million Californians have done the right thing. They've bent that curve. They've bought us time. They've given us the ability to help others in need. And again, the worst thing we can do is cut the parachute before we land. Uh, we really have to follow through on all this good work at peril that will have made one of the most historic mistakes imaginable, and that was running the 90-yard dash. So you also made news last night, Governor, by saying you had uh, used your purchasing power of California to get 200 million masks, many of those for hospital workers, but others for ordinary Californians, because we're now also being told, as I'd like to hear from you, that we should be wearing masks wherever we go and if we go out, even yeah. though we're under stay-at-home orders. Is that what you want us to do? Yeah, so let, let me talk about face coverings in a second and answer that specifically, but I want to brag on you and your son a little bit. You guys were there. Uh, Patrick, your father uh, set aside when your mom was first lady. You guys set aside 21 million N95 masks. No other state had a cache in storage that large. And it allowed us a head start of other states. Were we able to distribute those 21 million masks? We found an additional 20 million, uh, but it really bought us time, including, by the way, uh, 544 ventilators that we already had procured and stored. So I just want to acknowledge that. Number two, we recognize it's still totally 
insignificant to meet the moment. We need 500 plus million additional uh, units of protective uh, face masks and shields and gloves, and gowns and the like. And so we've been playing small ball. We were procuring a million here, 200,000 here, getting 20,000 here donated, which was fabulous. But we weren't meeting the moment, particularly in relationship, Maria, to your question. And that is, if we're going to provide face coverings for millions of Californians to go to the grocery store yeah. uh, and to walk outside, how are we going to do that when we're limited in limiting the number of face masks available to our nurses and our doctors and even our grocery workers? So we decided we had to go big. And we just did that. We just made a deal, a couple deals, uh, that will allow us to procure 200 million masks every 30 days. Uh, it's the wow. biggest uh, deal of its type anywhere outside of the United States, we think itself. Um, and we put it in perspective, not only are we using our purchasing power, but let me tell you exactly what I mean by that. We're writing a $495 million check uh, as the down payment and making available $1.4 billion uh, to finish the job, to increase supply, not only for California, but we think we can actually impact supply chains across the country uh, and try to provide for all of us that need to feel more confident and comfortable going out in public by, do, uh, by providing the appropriate face coverings. And we hope eventually masks. We think it's a good idea, Maria, forgive me for belaboring this, but it's not a substitute for physical distancing. Right. So if you think you're going to put on a mask, and then you can go out and play volleyball uh, or hang out with your friends. That's not the point. We do advise, though, if you are going to the grocery store and you're in a queue or you have to do essential shopping, pharmacy and the like, that it's in your interest and in your neighbor and friend's interest to have a mask on. So, Governor, this morning we had on Chef Jose Andres, who I know you've been working with on Project Room Key, feeding mm -hmm. homeless people. Almost daily, you seem to kind of be announcing some new initiative. You, you talked about asking people who had been in the medical profession to come back. You're asking ordinary citizens in the state of California to call, particularly elderly citizens, pick mm -hmm. up the phone and call. You worked with the chef about getting uh, food to homeless people. And the other thing that I thought was really interesting that you've done here, so many people are struggling with their mental health yeah. under these orders, telling people to stay home, particularly people who live alone, who are struggling financially in every way. Uh, talk a little bit about what the state is doing to get ahead of people's anxiety and mental health challenges and where people can turn if they find themselves just at their wits end. Uh, Maria, it couldn't be more timely. Uh, we lost two teenagers just up here in Sacramento in the last 48 hours that took their lives out of school, not feeling that their yeah. fate and future uh, was in front of them, it was behind them, all the anxiety uh, of, of youth combined with this moment. And so we, we want to make sure we're there for folks. We want you to stay at home, but we want you to know you're not alone and that we have resources and people care and they give a damn about you. So if you have you know, suicidal thoughts, we have hotlines. If you're struggling through this period, which of course all of us are struggling, we're all human with anxiety and insecurity. We're worried about our, you know, we lost our job or we're, our wages are down, our assets. You know, what's the value of our home? Can we pay our mortgage? And maybe we could pay it this month, but are we gonna be able to pay it in three or four months, our rent? And so we created a, a whole list of resources using our Surgeon General. California has a Surgeon General and she's amazing. And she put out a, a whole guideline and checklist for kids, not just adults. And I know this is a tough website, but it's on our covid19.ca.gov website. covid19.ca.gov website. We'll put All of that price. is out there. We'll yeah. put that information up and it's pretty clear. I went and checked it out so it can guide you uh, to professionals, which is important. Project Room Key can guide you if you're homeless or homeless. you have somebody who is homeless, if you have an elderly loved one. I mentioned, Governor, that you and I are working together on Alzheimer's. We're doing a big town hall after this. Yeah, um, so you've really tried to step up to help vulnerable citizens. You put out an executive order last night about elderly people and young kids. What do you want the elderly to know uh, that you understand about their plight? Uh, you know, we, the Surgeon General, the last Surgeon General of the United States of the Obama administration said, 
the number one preventable disease in the United States of America is social isolation. Mm. Just think about that a year or two or four years ago, and now combine this moment where people quite literally are cut off from loved ones, where their kids and grandkids can't give them a hug, they can't even physically check in on them because we want to isolate our seniors to make sure their health, which is so precious, is protected because they're most vulnerable uh, to COVID-19. And so the power and potency of a voice, someone who just gives a damn and checks in and says, how are you doing? Not just providing meals, not just providing essential medical support, uh, but providing just a point of contact, just some consideration. And so we really want to encourage people not only uh, to be safe, stay at home, but reach out, just call five folks, call five uh, friends or neighbors or, or get that list of, of, of your parents, friends, and seniors that uh, you can just check in on. And, and I just think it makes all the damn uh, difference in the world, it's physical and brain health. And we have to integrate all of that together. Yeah, absolutely. so good. And I, 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 I'm really curious myself, and I was talking to my mom about this, and we've been doing kind of small business Saturdays every Saturday. Um, and I saw that you were also trying to do stuff for small businesses in, in California with different forms of, you know, maybe a bridge loan and a sales tax. A lot of the people on here are business owners, are employees of businesses. Can you explain a little bit more about what you're um, doing with small businesses? Patrick, I love it. We share a passion for entrepreneurialism. It was the cause of my life. It's the reason I'm in politics. I opened a little wine store right out of college, one part-time employee. We grew it to about 1,000 employees, 23 businesses. And trust me, I'm not saying that to impress you, but to impress upon you a passion for entrepreneurialism and small right businesses. And I'm not talking about small business being 500 people earning 100 million bucks a year. I'm talking about two or three employees, part-time employees, or people that don't even have employees but are self-employed. And look, man, these people put everything on the line. It's their identity. It's right. their future. It's what they, you know, it's their dreams and they're at risk and at peril unless we do everything we can. And so the most important thing we can do is, is, is get this federal program where we have $349 billion and get those dollars drawn down to small businesses. But people are having a hard time getting those loans from banks. Yeah. Uh, we literally are working with Speaker Pelosi's office to fix that program and obviously get more money, which will be needed to help. But in addition to that, we're creating these micro loans in the state of California using our iBank because we recognize people, particularly in mixed status uh, families and those that may not have traditional uh, social security numbers that are running their small businesses uh, on Main Street, they won't have access to SBA loans. And we're making those loans available uh, through our iBank as well, tens of millions of dollars. And we're trying to get those dollars out in real time. How do people get that? People are wondering because they're saying they're having trouble with the banks or having trouble accessing loans. Yeah, I hate to go back to that covid19.ca.website, okay. website, but literally it's one of the, the bars on top, the covid19.ca.gov website. Okay, and finally, Governor, because I know you've got so much to do. So many of the people we've been doing these and we're having Vivit Murphy, the former Surgeon General, on Friday to talk about loneliness. So I'm glad that you brought him up. But... Um, the people who seem to really be struggling are people who lost jobs and who have little kids at home. And you have four little kids <laughs> at home. <laughs> and I know you've been really busy, but um, any words of wisdom for people who are really struggling uh, with small children at home, trying to work from home or trying to educate their kids from home and balance all of this? Um, I, you know what? I'm, I, I gotta be honest, I'm the last person to dispense advice because I need it. <laughs> It is the hardest part of this. I got four kids under the age of 10. And Maria, a few weeks back, this really came home. Uh, to re the night before, I told uh, my second youngest, Brooklyn, I said uh, she was really upset because um, she realized she wasn't going back to school and she wasn't going to see her friends. And, and she had a hard night sleeping. But the next night I came home and I got home a little late. My wife looked at me and I said, what? And she walked right past me. And I, was, I know that look. And I heard the screaming and it was Brooklyn. I love Brooklyn to death, but she had thrown all her bed spread over, the bed had tipped over. Uh, she wasn't going to bed and she was really struggling. And I spent about an hour and a half with her and I realized she couldn't communicate her anxiety. She couldn't communicate her stress and, and, and nor was my wife able to communicate it at that moment. 
And my wife's a rock star, an incredible parent. It's only a way of saying this, just deep empathy. And you know what? Deep breaths. You know, take care of yourself. Call a friend. There's nothing wrong with calling someone. Uh, focus on what you're eating. Get a little exercise. Take a deep breath. Walk outside, appropriately physically distanced from others, but walk outside and just really, really take care of your physical and mental health so you can take care of those kids. Finally, Governor, any idea when this we might get back to a new normal, when people might be able to go out? You know, we'll get back to some semblance of normalcy, but we can never go back to complacency until we have a vaccine, the herd immunity, that ultimately allows us to turn a corner. But we have to be really sober, Maria. None of us know the answer to that question, but I will say this, the answer resides in, inside of every one of us in this respect. It's our decisions that will determine that answer. It's the decision to stay home this weekend and not go out uh, with a bunch of friends uh, and, you know, and have a party or a barbecue. I think he's gonna pop back in there. Yes, yes, yes. Bravo to our governor. I'll read the comments, Penny. Thank you. If he's still there, thank you, Governor. There's a lot of, this is so true, stay home, stay home, do what he says. A lot of thumbs up for in the Capitol, which probably oh, doesn't, he left. He left. Okay. okay. It's anyway. all good. We had an amazing conversation yeah. with the uh, Governor of California, Gavin Newsom. I think that he talked about so many different areas yeah. from, uh, you know, gifting ventilators to other states, to the small business, um, loans and how you can access that to information about staying in touch with people if you're um, wanting to um, volunteer or call people. I think he was really interesting about how humbled he was. He's been in politics for a long time and how kind of surprised he was about how people have stepped up and wanted to help. And mm -hmm. if you go to the website, uh, if you live in California, but even if you don't live in California, you can get a lot of good information on that COVID-19 cal.gov yeah and we'll put it up in our stories right. or in our how do you put that the comments or whatever the comments i think some people already did put it up there oh, and if okay. you remember it uh if you guys can comment it if not we will put it on our instagram story later today yes where um, you can go and that has information about mental health about stress about the vulnerable about the elderly about job loans about small businesses um, about, gosh, um, almost anything you can think of. So um, I think he's doing an incredible job as governor. There are a lot of governors doing a great job leading us forward. Um, so they'll put- COVID19.ca.gov. Thank you guys for doing that. Sorry, Pat, thank you very much. So I don't know if anybody could read that. Also, um, there's kind of what a great day we've had. Two really inspiring men, men who are stepping up, uh, who are learning. Uh, there, your sister just said, I can't wait for him to run for president. Wow, your sister watched. That's yeah, really great. That's a first. That's a first. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> Hi, Ka Catherine is geographically distant from, no, she's ge geographically close, but she's social distance over there. She's distant. She, no, she's not distant. She's, she's just, just over there. She's in her own house and she's serious about the distancing thing. Which is good. Which is good. So Responsible. We, we admire that yeah. in her. Anyway, but we miss her. Yes. Anyway, so we Anyways. want to thank Gavin Newsom. Great job, I think, uh, getting the masks for Californians. Uh, Catherine Schwartzman said that was rude. We love you. What we said was we love you. Yes, um, we anyway, you. ventilators to other states. That's how it should work in our country. We're all one. So I thought that that was really terrific. I thought it was inspiring. They said that he'd been humbled by so many people. And I thought even his story at the end about his own family mm -hmm. um, is indicative of what so many millions of families are going through. Kids who can't communicate, parents who are stressed out. Uh, so we're in this together. Are you leaving? Okay. No, no, All right. So anyway, um, we want to thank everybody for joining us on Home Together. Uh, tomorrow, we're welcoming uh, Van Jones, who's another great journalist. He works over at CNN. He doesn't work with me at NBC, but he works at CNN, and he has his uh, finger really on the pulse of this country, uh, also does incredible work in our nation's prisons, and so he has a lot going. He has an organization himself. So many people, uh, I think everybody we've had on has some kind of an organization. Yeah.
well, that's why what we're doing is what we're doing. Including we're, we're, me. I have we're an organization. highlighting people that have organizations but are utilizing this time right now to find uh, unique ways to give back and to help other people. And that's why we started this Instagram Live originally. That's exactly right. And that's why we're keeping it going because there's so many people who want to come on and talk to you about the work they're doing and how they would like to work with you and how we can all work together. So that's our goal. Um, that's uh, what that's makes goal. us feel good. And I hope it's what makes you feel good. I'm now going to go over to the uh, Women's Alzheimer's Movement, which is the organization that I work with that works to understand why women are disproportionately impacted with Alzheimer's and is working with the Alzheimer's Association, the governor, ARP, and we're going to have this big- Abby Champion. Oh, Abby Champion watch. Doesn't wow. that, oh, Stacey Abrams. That would be 3 p.m. Alzheimer's California on Facebook. If you want to join that town hall, which is open to the world, with the Alzheimer's California on Facebook. Yes. Um, so you can join that. Patrick is free to go now and um, do whatever he wants. And so we want to thank all of you. And we will thank see you, you so here much. tomorrow with Van Jones at two o'clock. I'm We're Patrick also... Schwarzenegger. I'm the co-anchor now. I've now been, my role elevated. has boosted, elevated. Yes. And this is where I sign off. Okay. I'm Maria Shriver, his co-anchor. And thank you so much for joining us. God bless you and have a happy Passover if you're celebrating that and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.